back to another episode of the unfiltered with jade i'm so excited to have you back today we have a special guest her name is nurse sam and we're going to be asking her many questions in this pandemic there are so many questions that we want to ask because we need so many answers because we're all running about helter skelter we don't know what to do sometimes we don't know the precautions to take and we don't know really how it affects us and how it even affects those persons who are frontliners so we want to even thank you nurse for being such an awesome person for the community for the world because you have been saving people Every day. Oh my. So I wanna thank Gloria. you. So welcome to this episode, Nurse Sam. Thank you, thank you, Jade, for having me today. <laughs> and I appreciate your welcome and your thank yous for what you guys say. It's a work of a superhero. It truly is in this of time of the pandemic. Heroes. What you guys do we not, we're not doing. Me not doing. <laughs> So, <laughs> what you're not doing? What you're not doing? Jane? Listen, what? What going to do that? Taking care of sick people. Look here, I stay at home. I'm not going out there. I'm not interacting. <laughs> I'm not going out there. So the mere fact that this is what the profession calls for, that, and that is why you are called. Many are called. <laughs> you're right. You are chosen. <laughs> okay, you are right. <laughs> Many yeah. are called, but few are chosen. Yes. Nurse, I'm introduce yourself to the persons listening. Hello, everyone out there. My name is Nurse Sam, and I have been a nurse for, um, let's see, oh my God, I think it's six years now. Um, first pediatric nurse and now adult nurse in the UK. And yeah, I'm here with Jade. <laughs> being unfiltered <laughs> yes yes and you have been doing you have been doing such a great job but i want to ask some Thank questions you. i want to ask some questions today go ahead go ahead how does working hmm, how does working with these long hours affect the, dyna the dynamics of your relationships because you're married right yes i am mm -hmm. how does it affect it not <laughs> only with well with your spouse, what even persons around you, your friends, how does it affect you? Well, uh, so I work 12 hour shifts. So hmm. that being said, I am out for a whole day, basically, because mm -hmm. after 12 hours, believe you me, there's nothing else you want to do. Mm -hmm. So in regards to my marriage, um, I would say I'm in a situation where my husband at the moment is not actually with me. Mm -hmm. We're not in the same country at the moment. So okay. um, I guess we have been exper experiencing social distancing <laughs> <laughs> and isolation <laughs> even before this pandemic started. <laughs> um, but also... So in that case, we didn't have to worry about um, me going to work and taking the virus home to um, infect him right? and stuff like that. But also, it affected us in a way that um, he's in another country worrying about me being infected at work. Mm. And me being here and not being able to see him to see if he has any symptoms, you know, mm -hmm. that wife and nurse instinct to mm -hmm. say, oh my God, you have a flu, what's going on? I am here. Instead, I am putting all that care into um, the people of the country. Mm -hmm. And I was scared at one point that if 
God forbid, he does get the virus, I will not be there mm. to comfort him, to help him through it in whatever way I could. And him being in another country, you know, everyone has been hearing on the media that if your loved one die or get ill and goes to the hospital, you're not able to visit them. Mm-hmm. You're not able to retrieve the body for a long period of time. And if you are able to do a Thanksgiving ceremony, it's very quick. Just a couple of family members and yeah, that's it. And with him being in another country, all of that, what what would happen? Mm. How am I going to get to see him? How am I going to get his body, God forbid, if that was going to be the outcome? And all of that went through. We spoke about that in length. Um, we spoke about him trying to come back home. <laughs> but at the time, it, it was like a whirlwind, to be honest. Because it's like last one week we heard this virus is here. What if, and then the next week, the whole place went and shut down like country right after country in Europe and whatever and he's in Europe mm. and before you know it he wasn't able to come back so that wasn't an option for us for him to come back um yeah so we just kind of you know video call it out and I also I don't know. I don't know. I'm he's not sure in a do country pardon I'm not sure how you do it though I know it. It's rough. It's rough. Think- I send him everything I can because the country is in doesn't speak English. So if I hear him with a cough, I run to the hey, pharmacy. Man. I get some <laughs> medication and everything. I pack up some mask in some in a bag and post it off to him and say, "Listen, start taking this," you know, and we we'll try to make it work. So far, yeah. we are both good. So yeah. Well, well, that is good. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm happy about the precautions that you guys are taking, and I'm happy about the steps that you guys are taking in terms of trying to protect yourself and trying to ensure that you still are checking up on each other. Because I don't know personally how I could have done it if it is I'm in a different country from my spouse. It just not it it just wouldn't work. <laughs> because, because listen, me and now every time if it's like, it work. <laughs> listen. The simplest thing, simplest thing. If it is that I hear my spouse cough, a problem in the... I see serious issues because I want what happened to you. I think I would be panicking. I'd be, I'd, I'd, I'd be very anxious. Very anxious. I I'm not going to say I wasn't. I, I was very anxious. And he works on a construction site <laughs> with many 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 men and men don't and we know exactly that men are not the the more most hygienic <coughs> you know sex. you know um, i was gonna yeah. say but i think i i'm not i, I was just allowed to say it <laughs> so if anybody yeah, comes so. to me up, I say, nurse i'm said it also here <laughs> yeah yes. i'm sorry guys but <laughs> it's true <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and also a lot of his co-workers are from a lot of different countries. So mm. just the thought of who is going to take it to work. Oh, my God. In yep. Europe, it's so easy to cross borders. You can take a bus, you can take a train. So people from Italy, you remember Italy was like it was the uh, epidemic. It was going like wildfire in Italy. And there were workers traveling from Italy to work every day. <laughs> Oh, and it was it was it was it was scary it was scary Thank um you. where he resides is in the hills away from most of the population so he wasn't really affected when he went out publicly and where he is is very the the, the citizens there are very very um what, what should i say ruly oh yeah, In- they obey the law like nowhere <coughs> else I've seen. <laughs> yeah, it's- so whatever sure. the government says, they do that. When we had the scare with everybody trying to buy all um the groceries, all the toilet paper for some reason, and um the supermarkets were jam packed, 
he did not have that issue not one time Listen, during all of this. Let's stick a pin. People buy no <laughs> toilet papers because we're going to be at home. <laughs> the more that we're at uh, home, the more that we use the bathroom. It requires yes. toilet paper. Because yes. I'm, um, I'm hearing that people ran out of toilet paper and had to be using clothes. Jade, you know what? Initially, when this whole toilet pe- tissue craze started and everybody was like, why is everyone buying toilet paper? I don't understand. I can kind of understand why they buy toilet paper. Now, if this is a flu-like virus and you're, you are expected or the, what is portrayed is that almost everyone will catch this virus, mm-hmm. you're expecting to have runny nose, mm-hmm. <laughs> some symptoms actually include diarrhea Mm -hmm. right and if you have a household of four persons can you imagine exactly all the all the mucus that needs to be discarded Mm -hmm. yep and all the bombs that need to be wiped exactly and the easiest way to get rid of the germs is by using something disposable and it's a cheaper alternative to, to hand towel. It so is. why not use it? So it I get it. I get it. Yes. I, I, I still wish though that many places could have had that discipline. By where your yeah, husband is, the other places have the same discipline. Because if not, it would lessen the amount of persons who are infected or have been affected by this virus. You know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, 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 I see that the superhero in you is there protecting <laughs> other persons and ensuring that they're doing okay. And you know, you have to be on your game. You can't be yeah. sleeping on, on this because people's lives are in danger. People are going to be so affected. Um, these days, once you have a call for people have running belly, we go straight to the hospital because we don't know what is <laughs> it's as if people can't have cold anymore and it's as if people nope. can't have diarrhea no more nope no nope. what sorry in the midst of nope. all of this what it is that you are doing to protect yourself because working in an environment where every day you interact with persons who may have it or persons you don't know if it is that they're taking the precautions or persons who just don't care what it is that you're doing to protect yourself you know um before this pandemic started, I started um, changing my diet a bit. Mm. I started eating a bit more healthier. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I cut a lot of refined sugars out of my diet. Okay. And I strongly advise that for a lot of people. Mm. Um, so I think that helped me, one, to boost my immune system. Mm-hmm. All my fruits and vegetables, whatever I want to do with it, I do it on my own. I don't okay. buy it in the supermarket pre-done, pre-seasoned, or mm-hmm. canned. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, if I want fruit juice, I blend it or juice it myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I try it, and in that, um, also, I take vitamins. Okay. I take vitamins, I take um, minerals and supplements. So I take my vitamin C. Where I live, we don't get a lot of sun over here, Jay. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to get my vitamins <laughs> that I'm lacking from the beautiful sun, <laughs> you know. Um, so my vitamin D, my vitamin C, my multivitamins. So, mm. and you have some immune boosting vitamins as well. That, that one yeah, you can have. Vitamin. You know, yeah, you know. Um, <clears throat> now some I was I was told. I'm just informed. So I'm asking you as as the nurse in in this conversation. Is it true that mm. sex helps to build your immune system? <laughs> you know, I'm just asking, you know, for somebody um, out there on behalf of persons who may be wondering, you know. I would say, I don't know about <laughs> the immune system, but I would say it's a very good way to exercise the whole body. And exercise is very important too. <laughs> 
a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> so, if you want to add that into your healthy lifestyle, I would strongly advise <laughs> you strongly. have as much she as you want. Strongly, guys. Strongly. Yes. Compliment. Strongly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, you know, helps you to get rid of, loosen all those muscles from the hard work that you have put in, the stress that is released in all your muscles and all the tension in your body, that will help, definitely help yeah, that's right. you to relax. So guys, yeah, so. we're we are giving the go ahead to go and um yes. have, have have sex, have yeah. have um protected sex, safe yeah. sex. Oh yes. In fact I yeah. don't even know if I want people to do that in this time because it's is we have been a we have been a virus going on and people sometimes <laughs> don't even know how to and we don't want to spread this. We don't want to spread this because sometimes people um, don't even know how to be cautious. Yeah. Yes. Um, let me just tell persons listening and if it is that you hear some um in and out, in and out, re the voicing, it's because of the internet. We're having some internet issues. But we we will proceed. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. So question are persons really dying? as how the number in the tabloids are suggesting? Uh-huh. No, I wouldn't be a good person to like divulge into this area. Mm-hmm. I can say a lot of persons have lost their life. Okay. A lot. Um, initially, I think because Things in the media kept changing rapidly. Mm-hmm. Every 30 minutes, there's a different method of caring for these per- these um, COVID positive patients. Mm-hmm. There's a different method of um, protecting yourself, what proper PPE to wear, what not to wear, what to do, what not to do. And because it's a new virus, now COVID-19 is a strain of virus right Mm -hmm. in the past we have had a different strain no Mm. so they know about that one but this one is new Mm. right and you you can say it unfolded throughout Mm. the world the same time it unfolded with the scientists the chemists so they were learning about it as it took people's lives sadly mm. the different ways that it can present changed daily mm. um varied from age group to age group from different ethnicities right so it was very difficult in the beginning stages of this virus and um for where i work now um it was a lot of wow. deaths. Wow. I mean, rapidly. I remember um, working on a COVID ward with bays with six patients per bay. Wow. And obviously all six would have COVID. And um, in space of 30 minutes, between 30 minutes to four hours, You'd have people dying like right in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And there's not, the thing is, because as I said, this virus is new. We all know there's no cure. There's no vaccine yet. They are working on it. They have started testing on some medications and stuff like that. But um, it was just to treat the symptoms. So if you had shortness of breath, is to uh, alleviate your shortness of breath. So oxygen, um, you know, repositioning, deep breathing and coughing, make um, techniques and stuff like that. If you had a fever, it was to give something to to control your, your fever and all of that. So it was just trying to maneuver all of that. And there was a lot of um, persons as well that, to be honest, they had to decide, are we going to, use all the material and resources to save this life mm. or that life oh dear god so you have to choose now yeah. who you save and who you don't save yeah there was a lot of so that basically basically your life is in the hands of persons 
uh, yeah yeah it's yeah. hard to say but yes that's why and I'm especially with persons with a lot of comorbidities so the elderly elderly persons that have so many other things going on with them health wise diabetes hypertension all kind of other diseases and then covid come on top of it it's just it's Mrs. just gonna... elderly people have these things you know i know i know but they are more vulnerable there are yeah. and initially again as we said because the elderly died so quickly right the right media portrayed it that's oh the elderly is the only vulnerable or the higher vulnerable um group then the the younger persons weren't you know Mm -hmm. doing their due diligence to make sure that they protect themselves not knowing that they would carry it to the elderly and they too could have died and they did die so it's it's everybody it it didn't spare any age group at all Mm. um so yeah it was it was difficult and the numbers i would I don't know. The numbers reflect a lot. Let's put it that way. I don't think a lot of persons got tested or some persons got tested before they passed away. Mm -hmm. So the numbers, I would say it's estimated numbers. I don't think the numbers are 100% spot on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You have persons that... Yeah. And you have persons that died from other illnesses. And people say it's COVID just because it's in the COVID time. (sighs) You have persons that come to the hospital with something that is not COVID and sadly die of COVID or live with COVID. Because, again, it's a very, it's a very contagious um, virus. And you're in the atmosphere Mm -hmm. it's just it's everywhere Mm -hmm. it's hard for even us as healthcare providers to not get this virus Mm -hmm. just by taking off your ppe just by taking off your mask you could have protected yourself right through caring for your patients and just when you're taking off your protective gears that's when this virus gets to you so it's it's just praying and just hoping for the best, hoping that you don't get it. Or if you get it, you, 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 um, you're able to, you know, succumb, not succumb to it. Mm-hmm. The, this virus doesn't sound pretty at all. It doesn't sound pretty at it, all. It's not. Um, it's not. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Unfiltered by Jade. We're speaking with Nurse Sam, and she has been she has been informing us and educating us about this virus and how to protect ourselves and what to do. And I, I'm truly saying, listening, listening to you, Nurse Sam. It is. I don't know. As I said, many are called, few are chosen. As some get text message, I know I didn't get nothing from it because. I was not called to do something like that. I couldn't do it. I can't bear seeing people dying in front of their face. I mean, ah. I have done, I mean, I, I have seen some COVID, some phone COVID tests being done. And, you know, people send it to my phone to do it. And I've done the COVID test via my phone. And the result I get is that my stress out. And Miss, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> that was my result from the test that I did on my phone. And I, what I want to find out is how is your mental mental health? Do you think that 
persons, doctors and nurses and people working at the front line, do you think that they should get some counseling? Because it can really damage a person who are not even in the front line, a.k.a. myself. Anything that can happen like that, I say, God, is this it? Because... Yeah, so yes, sometimes, so sometimes as I cough, my lie down and I said, Jesus, is it is this it? Is this it? Yep, what is happening? It. <laughs> um, it's good that you brought up that point. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Healthcare workers, frontline workers, we all need counseling. It is not normal. What's going on is not normal nope. at all to see the whole world dying. It's, it's in this um, multitude as well. So even being in the healthcare profession, yes, you know you're working with sick, sick people. Yes, you know people are going to die. But that does not mean that it doesn't bother you. <sighs> A lot of healthcare professionals can't manage death. Really? Actually. Really? No, no, they can't. They cannot. I've seen I've seen nurses um get a patient that goes into cardiac arrest and die and they're shaking. Jesus. They they don't know what, what's the next step. They they can't do anything. Jesus. I've seen persons in a demonstration group of how to do the last office, which is to how to take care of the body after death to transport to the morgue. And nurse um, just break down in tears. And we are doing it on a mannequin just to show us the proper way to do it. And they break down in tears. It could be flashback of a death. Jesus. It reminded her of or a patient, even personally, someone, or family member, or something. But we don't all, you know, um, it's not normal to accept death. And then in this magnitude, it's going to take a big toll on our mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think counseling is due for all frontline workers during this time and also we too need to take respons responsibility of our mental health mm -hmm. and try to you know get get away from the media and all the what's going on in the news take a break and this is for everyone mm -hmm. not only frontline workers don't just live on the news to find out what's the figures today what's mm -hmm. going on which world is crashing um which cities crashing and stuff like that take a break sometimes from the news mm -hmm. listen to some music read a book watch a movie something you know um do something fun talk to someone a friend a family member whatever it is and yeah take a break we, sometimes we from social media because it can become so stressful oh yeah Yes, yes, social media, of course, oh, so take a break from that as well. I, I, yeah. I was wearing, well, we have all, all type of, all type of masks now coming out, because everybody making <laughs> their own masks and all sorts of something. But let me tell you something. Oh. Um, I had put on a mask the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's as if I saw Jesus coming down. The way how I couldn't be. <laughs> Mr. Norman, is this supposed to cause you? Is, is this supposed to cause death or supposed to be preventing you from getting <laughs> a virus? Because I'm not, first of all, I don't like anything on my face. Second of all, right. something is on my face and I feel like I can't breathe. When I finish, go, when I go on the road and I come back, and mind you, sharp, I go on the road quickly and come back quickly because. We cannot afford it. <laughs> and by the time I right. come back home, I end up with a headache. I end up with not being able to breathe properly. I have a chest pain because mm -hmm. I wear the mask. What mm -hmm. is it that we need to do? Sure. You're just exaggerating the fact that the mask is suffocating. But okay, I get it. <laughs> <All right>. Um, <laughs> What do we need to do with the face mask? Oh my God, this is so 
controversial at the moment. Face mask. In my opinion, I'm no face mask ex- expert. I'm just a nurse. No, you're not just a nurse. You're um, a superhero. Let us change up that. You're not just a oh nurse. God. You're a superhero. You're a superhero. You're not just a nurse. Let's go. Mm. Right. So, in my opinion, there are masks out there that don't does not protect you at all. So, all these ones that everyone is sewing at home, selling um, without a filter on it, with proper without proper um, suction around the nose and mouth, like like the FFP three mask or some M ninety five mask, it does not protect you against the virus. Mm. Because it's droplet that spreads the virus. So it spreads through the air. Right? Mm-hmm. So if there's any gaps in your masks or there's no filter on your mask, it will not mm-hmm. protect you from the virus. So majority of the masks that I've seen people wearing in public it does not protect them from the virus mm-hmm. at all. Right? Mm-hmm. No, you're saying you're suffocating. Listen. That mask may be the best mask to wear. But I'm suffocating? Yes. No. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry to tell you. But the mask that we wear in the hospitals, the FFP3 mask, it, when you put it on, you should not be able to breathe properly in that mask. If you can, it's not fitting properly. Mm. right Mm -hmm. some masks are for preventing you from taking in dust so you know those masks that construction workers wear Mm -hmm. with that valve on the front Mm -hmm. right it stops them from breathing in the dust but it doesn't stop them from droplets coming in because it's smaller molecules than dust and if they have the virus, it doesn't stop them from spreading the virus to others. So you'll be seeing someone in a mask and say, yep, I'm good. I can sit near them. I can walk past them. I can talk to them face to face, whatever, because they have a mask on. No. If they have the virus, they're giving it to you because that mask does not trap the virus, the droplets. Right? Mm-hmm. But what the mask does do i would say is to prevent you from touching your face and your nose which are points of entry for the virus so i'm not saying people should not wear their homemade masks right and where's the you can because okay and is that the the recommended one is the ffp3 yes Miss nowhere that sell mask again, you know. Sorry, there's nowhere that sells any mask again, you know. You look on the internet. <laughs> you look on the Trust internet. me, where I am, <laughs> one mask, one surgical mask, by the way, that lasts less than an hour, then it's of no use to you. Wait, what? Costs a pound Wait, fifty. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The surgical yes, mask. These masks are disposable. People might not realize that. The masks are supposed to be disposed of. <laughs> After how long? Not worn. Um, so don't quote me, but I know it is less than this number of hours that I'm gonna say. So the surgical, simple surgical mask doesn't give you any protection after an hour. Mm-hmm. What you said to me? Also. Any mask you wear, once you have touched that mask, that is it. You should discard of it. So, all these people I see pulling down masks to talk, pull up back masks to go in the stores, pulling back down the mask to do this, that mask is of no use. And what you said to me, so people out here catching things and they will know how they're catching it because yeah. I see people wearing the surgical mask and they have that mask wearing two days. Three days. No, no, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. So they just, nope. they just put it on a mask? Yeah, they just put it on a mask. 
everybody I'm just gonna advise you to stay home because this is this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and we're either gonna either suffocate with our mask or there are many people who are complaining about wearing the mask and not being able to breathe properly and it is causing health issues. Me personally, it is it's a cause in health issues for me when I keep wearing the mask. So I prefer to stay at home where I can breathe in my house and not to worry <laughs> about anything because once I go out, if somebody sneezes, I'm running. And I run yeah. there are places I'm not I'm not gonna catch anything. Um what about the, the washable or re- reusable mask? What about those? Yeah, so those as as you said, they are reusable. Not dirty, not worn. You have to wash them before you use them again. Right. Yeah. So those, so those as I say, they they are yeah, they are fine okay. as long as you wash them before using them again. Okay. You don't use them for the whole week. Right, right. Then wash them. Right. When you're washing your clothes. Right. When you okay okay. Um, <laughs> tell me something because you have worked both where you are now and in Jamaica. Um, what is the difference in patient care in Jamaica by, versus where you are now? Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh-huh. trouble the day. Uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> yes, trouble. <laughs> Set out for me on this one, right? <laughs> um, I must say, firstly, I loved working <laughs> in Jamaica. Oh, you're just putting that out there. You know? Yeah, I'm just putting it out okay. there. I loved it. Yeah. I worked with kids. And maybe that's why, one of the biggest reasons why I loved it okay. so much. Because I love kids. Okay. Um, I love my country. Um, But the difference... Is I don't even know the difference between the healthcare in Jamaica and in the UK where I am now is the resources. Okay. Jamaica is lacking resources. Okay. Yeah. They don't have the resources for the demand of the public Mm -hmm. Um, but with that said we make deal with what we have right Right. so we do a lot of improvisations yes yeah a lot and we make it work (laughs) I I like your as my granny would say is (laughs) we'll take what and make fashion fashion Right. Yeah, so it, it works. It works for the country, although it put more strain on the healthcare providers, mm-hmm. you know, to be working with less resources or limited resources per oh. population. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing, but we still get the job done. That's right. That's the main thing. And done in a proper manner, you know. Right. Um I mean, Jamaica is a third world country. Uh-huh. To 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 um compare it with a first world country, I think is unfair. Okay. For a third world country, we are doing good. There's a lot of improvements, and I know it will come over the years, but we're a third world country. Yes, I mean, so, I mean, from a from a, a nurse, a respectable nurse, I will take that. I, I I probably don't share the same views. I've never, had, <laughs> I've never had a good experience. <laughs> never had a good experience in the healthcare profession in Jamaica. Never have it. Never had it. I don't like it. Um, but as you said, we don't have the resources, and maybe that's why. Because maybe if it is that we had the resources. That's one of the reasons. That is one of the reasons. Yeah. Okay. You know, let let me explain something. I remember when I came here as a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. Have you seen a nurse in Jamaica, people, by the way? She looked like um, she's moving out or moving in. She has one million on one bag. And you're wondering... (laughs) 
Why the nurse? Why the nurse there have she have her handbag and it big like um a suitcase? <laughs> she have her lunch kit and she have this next bag and somewhere else. Why she why where is she going? I'm confused. Is she going home? Is she going to work? Is she moving out? What's going on? So that's because we have to carry our equipment with us to work. Oh. To make sure that we get our job done properly, right? As I said, we lack resources mm. in Jamaica. Okay. So as a nurse, I, I, let me say, me as a nurse, mm-hmm. I don't want to say this to, you know, say all nurses in Jamaica are like this, but as a nurse, I found it better when I had all my equipment to take care of my patients. So I, I brought my own stethoscope to work. My my own O2 sat machine to work, mm. my own blood pressure machine to work, mm. right? My own thermometer to work, mm. right? So that when my patient, when I need to use them on my patient, I have them. I don't have to worry about what's broken, what's missing, what's what need replacing, who's using what, and I have to wait mm. and stuff like that. I could deliver my care. In the time that it's needed to be delivered, right? Mm-hmm. So I came to this lovely country now, <laughs> and Jade, let me tell you, I pack up my bag my first day of work with everything, okay? <laughs> my steds, everything, and I had it, and I was like, yes, I'm gonna be that nurse, you know, in this first world country, you know, all of that. <laughs> when I went to work, oh dear. I didn't need anything. Oh, Lord. I was scratching my head. I was like, what's going on? Why do you guys have so much things? I, mean, I, I was like, what? We don't we don't use our own stat machines? No? Okay. Mm. We don't use stat. And, and, and to me, nursing in the UK, for me personally, mm-hmm. is not a skill centered job okay like it is back home in jamaica back home in jamaica Mm. you use your skills you use them here you do use them but it's more customer service and then goes to not having good experience back home Mm -hmm. the customer service and stuff but you are more accountable for customer service here than you are in, in Jamaica. Well, we are, we're not even going to talk about the, the customer service in Jamaica where that part is because um okay, so we will move on to to, <laughs> to something. Else. No, but for real, so taking care of patients here, it's all about pleasing them, full stop, in every single aspect, down to the menu that they get mm-hmm. to decide what they want to eat. And you see, that's important because that's what a third world country needs because patients are coming somewhere. It's not everybody like a hospital. Um, and when we go, I don't want to talk about me, when people go to, we go to look for persons or persons are going in themselves for something. You want, you want to feel comfortable going there, you know? Yes, the welcome, even the welcome when you come on the words here, it's totally different from back oh, home. Oh, you don't have a tell Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally different. So, And it's just a wider variety of stuff that they offer. Again, the system is that it's a government system, just like Jamaica. Mm-hmm. So you don't pay. Once you're a citizen of the country, right. you don't pay. Healthcare mm-hmm. is free. Very nice. And here, unlike Jamaica, even though Jamaica is um, free, it's free to an extent. <clears throat> there, Here, it is totally, to- if any surgery you want to do, any medication you need to get is free through the government system um, here. Where, where exactly I said you're again, I'm just trying to see. <laughs> um, <laughs> applying is, you know, how best I can man- get it there. You know how fast I yeah. can, you know, be there. Um, uh, listen, listen, and saying that it's free 
also it comes with some things will come with waiting times as well so appointments okay to see a gp appointments to do it depends on what surgery you need to do or what whatever um investigations you need to have done mm-hmm. but it is free yeah but i'm you sure you're not wait. waiting for the entire day i'm very sure of it, it okay that's the point Sometimes, sometimes, right? sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah. but um, and also, as I said, the resources. So here, every hospital has their own equipment. Not o- taking it from blood pressure machines and stethoscopes and stuff like that, like a MRI, MRI machine mm-hmm. or a CT machine. Every hospital has those. Okay. Unlike Jamaica. If someone needs an MRI or CT, you have to transport them from one hospital to an imaging center that has one, mm-hmm. a private Im- imaging center, or to one of the other public hospitals that have one. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So you have to take the patient out of that area to get that done mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, Understood. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, we have it, it was really a mouthful today. <laughs> I mean, in terms of we have learned so much, so so much. There, there are so many things that I've been wanting to ask, and I got to ask. There are so many questions that people have out there, and they want to, or they they have thoughts, and they want some verification or clarification on how things are done and what is done. Ex- ex- and right. you, you did a great delivery. I may say. Thank you. Thank you. Ever since, <laughs> ever since. <laughs> so as we're about to oh wrap God. up, I just want you to just um give a bit of recommendation to persons. I know you have done already in terms of telling us to take our vitamins, do whatever it is, but just give them a few recommendations before we close. Right. So my recommendations will be to wash your hands, guys. Please wash, wash, wash your hands hand sanitizers and um stop wearing the gloves thank you it does not make sense please stop wearing the gloves (laughs) it's better to wash your hand if you if you touch something just wash your hand yep it doesn't make sense to touch use a glove to you touch your car door then you touch your phone then you put your phone on your face then how does that make sense guys so just wash your hands sanitize everything clean down the place so this is a good time for everybody to be um you know ocd mm-hmm. when it comes on to cleaning mm-hmm. and take your vitamins as i said eat properly get a lot of sleep okay mm-hmm. sleep during the time you sleep it revitalizes your body you know and get everything up and running for the next day yes so don't deprive yourself of sleep drink a lot of water and just stay in the know stay in the know watch out for the signs and symptoms with you your loved ones friends and yeah social distancing guys Mm -hmm. listen to your local authorities as well and this is coming from nurse sam (laughs) so again we really appreciate you being on the program and thank you so oh, much. Thank you for having me. Yes, you have done you have done a fantastic job. Fantastic job. Thank you for having yes. me. Jane. I would just want to tell the, the viewers and the listeners that you can comment, you can make sure you share it with persons because there are persons who need to hear this information. So make sure you share it with persons. And guess what? We will definitely see you again next week, Tuesday. So thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.